Hello everyone, my name is Kat Kirchner and I became a Starbucks partner in September of 2017 at a store in Newport News, Virginia. In 2018, I became a barista trainer. As a barista trainer, I really got to live and share the Starbucks mission to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. When I moved to Bloomington, Indiana, I wanted to continue to inspire others with the Starbucks experience. And in 2020, I became a shift supervisor at Eastside Starbucks. With the support of my peers, I began the coffee leadership journey in February of 2021. Big, a big thank you to them for participating in many coffee tastings and everything else they do. We're gonna get today's presentation started with a coffee tasting. Uh, these are going to be very familiar for Starbucks partners. If you're not a Starbucks partner and you're just here to learn about coffee, don't worry. All you're going to need for a coffee tasting is going to be some coffee, uh, the brewer, brew method of your choice, and a mug. So today I'm going to be brewing two types of coffee for my tasting. I was very excited to try the uh, Costa Rica from the Premium Select Collection by Starbucks. Uh, this isn't available in Starbucks stores, it's at the grocery store, and I got mine off of Kroger.com. Uh, with my presentation pertaining to Costa Rica, I just really thought it was the perfect combination. But I also wanted to give an option for a coffee that you could get in Starbucks stores, so I went with the Sirens blend. Uh, these are both medium roast coffees, um, and they both have notes of citrus and chocolate. I've paired today's coffee tasting with a lemon loaf or a chocolate croissant. Both go really well with the notes in each coffee. Um, here I'm showing you my at-home coffee brewing setup. So on the left, I have my coffee grinder, I have my coffee pot, and I also have my um, filtered water there in my Brita. Um, so I'm going to start out grinding this Costa Rica blend here. Um, now keep in mind, you don't have to be grinding your own Starbucks coffee at home. We're happy to grind it for you in the store. Um, I just happen to have this to use. If I was at the store, I'd be doing um, a pour over. Just um, wanted to do it in a typical brewing coffee pot to share it with you and make it accessible. To everyone, whether you are familiar with a Starbucks coffee tasting or not. Um, so it's really important to make sure you have your grind setting correct um, to make sure you have a great tasting cup of coffee. It's also important to use filtered water. If you have any kind of like metal flavors or anything like that in your water, it's going to kind of have a funny taste. So I'm using water straight from my Brita um, and pouring it into my coffee pot. All right, so with our um, coffee pot here, you're gonna see me adding um, my little brewer topper. And inside of that, we use a reusable filter and my coffee grounds are gonna go right in there. I've got these measured out um, to make six cups of coffee. And first, as you saw, I'm making the Costa Rica blend. All right, so we're gonna give that time to brew. All right, that Costa Rica blend is all ready to serve. But before I enjoy that, I'm also gonna brew my Sirens blend. So I'm going to go through the same process here for the Sirens Blend Coffee. All right, so now I'm going to have both cups of cups of coffee ready for my coffee tasting and the first step of a coffee tasting is to cup your hand around the cup and give a deep inhale and smell the aromas of that coffee. All right so next we're going to slurp it and we really want to spray that coffee 
um, across our tongue and across our palate. Coffee's a little hot there, you can see. All right, I tried the Costa Rica blend first, and then I'm trying the Sirens blend. And the reason I paired these coffees together, although they're coffees from different parts of the world, they share a lot of tasting characteristics, like the notes of lemon and the notes of chocolate, um, or I guess I should say citrus and chocolate. So next, when we have our pastries, we're going to try our coffee again and see how the flavors in the pastries um, affect the taste of the coffee. So I'm starting out with some lemon loaf here and quickly realizing how funny it is to eat on camera. <laughs> I'm being pretty thoughtful about it, but I did enjoy the lemon loaf with both of the coffees. And then the chocolate croissant. And I really liked the chocolate croissant with the sirens blend. All right, so the next time you're enjoying a cup of coffee at home, I hope you might consider doing a coffee tasting of your own. And the best part about it is sharing it with someone else and describing the steps of the coffee tasting. Did you know Starbucks is committed to 100% ethical sourcing of its coffee? Let's learn more about that. Cafe practices are our comprehensive sourcing approach. They stand for coffee and farmer equality. It includes responsible purchasing practices, farmer support, economic and social, as well as environmental standards for suppliers, industry collaboration, and community development programs. Over the past 15 years, we have verified our coffee supply chain is 99% ethically sourced in partnership with Conservation International. We are working to ensure the long-term supply of high-quality, sustainable coffee for all customers and to positively impact the lives of coffee farmers and their families. Starbucks operates eight farmer support centers around the world. The goal is to connect and collaborate with coffee farmers and exporters. The first Farmer Support Center opened in San Jose in 2004. Starbucks operates nine Farmer Support Centers across the world. They're located in each of the three coffee growing regions in Latin America, Africa, and Asia Pacific. I'm going to take you through a timeline of when each of these Farmer Support Centers opened. In 2004, the very first one was opened in San Jose, Costa Rica. The next opened in 2006, and that's the Guatemala location, and it is actually a satellite location. In 2008, we opened our first farmer support center in Africa, in Ethiopia. In 2009, in Rwanda, followed by Tanzania in 2011. In 2012, we opened another farmer support center in Latin America, over in Colombia. In 2012, we also op we, in 2012 we also opened one in China. In 2015, our next Asia Pacific location opened in Indonesia. In 2016, we went to Mexico, and then in 2016 we also moved the. Farmer Support Center in Costa Rica, from San Jose to Hacienda Alsacia. Hacienda Alsacia is one of our farmer support centers and the only Starbucks coffee farm in the world. The mission of Hacienda Alsacia is to help ensure the future of coffee. We create best practices to make growing coffee more profitable for small-scale farms, develop the next generation of disease-resistant, high-quality coffee, 
and share information and resources freely with farmers around the world. All right, let's take a look at um, a little overview of the farm at Hacienda Alsacia. Our farmers in Costa Rica, around 80%, they are uh, small farmers. They can get coffee, but they cannot get enough coffee to help their families. I can show them how we have been doing things here at the farm and how can they do the same. So far we have more than 300 different coffee varieties. We have some which are resistant to coffee loss. Some others have a great potential as a reserve. And the idea is to generate new hybrids. Costa Rica is home to some of the best coffee beans in the world. Arabica beans were first introduced to the country in the 1700s. In the country of Costa Rica, there are eight different growing regions. The Hacienda Alsacia coffee farm is located in the Central Valley region, and it's in the Central Valley of the Paus volcano, and it is 45 minutes away from the capital of San Jose. Hacienda Alsacia is a coffee farm that started in 1970. Starbucks began purchasing coffee from the farm in 1971. Later, in 2013, Starbucks actually purchased the whole farm. It's a 600-acre coffee farm, or about 240 hectares, and the coffee farm would be open to visitors in March of 2018. Let's learn a little bit more about the coffee farm at Hacienda Alsacia. Oh, hey, nice cup of coffee. Do you know what it takes to make that? In 2013, Starbucks bought a coffee farm on the side of a volcano in Costa Rica. We call it Hacienda Alsacia. We didn't buy this farm because we needed more coffee. We bought it to learn about the problems coffee farmers are facing. So who are these farmers? Meet Victor. Victor manages the farm and he loves coffee. Victor's worked in coffee for over 25 years and spends his days on the farm making sure we have the highest quality trees possible. Look at that. <laughs> that being said, he couldn't do it without Carlos Mario. Carlos Mario is in charge of all research and development at the farm. He's one of the world's most respected agronomists and is the go-to guy for all of our farmer support centers around the world. One thing that they discovered while talking with other farmers is that climate change is destroying the trees due to the rise of rust. No, not that kind of rust. This kind of rust. Here's Conservation International CEO Dr. Sanjin to tell us all about it. There's a really solid connection between climate change and the availability of coffee, particularly good coffee. So you take a disease like coffee rust, which destroys millions of coffee trees around the world. Climate change makes that fungal disease just a lot worse. So unless we do something about it, coffee really becomes at risk. Oh no, we gotta stop this. On our farm, we're dedicated to ensuring the future of coffee from the seed to the cup. We have a nursery where we're growing unique hybrids of trees that are highly resistant to diseases like rust. So what do we do with these trees? Well, we plant them. Then the sun shines on them, then we wait, 
Then we wait for more. Once the trees grow, we pick the cherries. Did you know that coffee cherries are picked by hand? These hands. Once the cherries are picked, they take a bumpy ride to the wet mill. From there, they're given a flow test to separate the good from the bad. And then the skins are removed, and the beans are raked into pretty patterns to be dried up by the sun. Pause. Did you know you can come and see all this in action? On the farm, there's a visitor center where you can actually pick some of the cherries in case the coffee being grown here. Not to mention, you never know who you're gonna run into. Hey, Howard. This is our first farm that we have actually owned and operated. We've been working side by side with farmers to lead in sustainable farming practices. No way, that's so cool. So how do we actually make sure that all that coffee tastes great too? Well, that's Jessie's job. She works in quality control. She samples all the coffee grown at the farm to make sure it's up to our standards. Yes, every single batch. Once we get the all clear from her, the beans are roasted on site. Then it's off to the cafe where Jose Daniel is ready to take your order. Wait a minute, does this guy look familiar? It's Victor's son, and he's a barista at the cafe on the farm. Even though we're a big company, coffee is still personal to us. From knowing the names of our farmers to growing stronger coffee trees, we're dedicated to finding solutions not just for Starbucks, but for everyone who loves coffee. That's why everything we learn on the farm is open source and shared with farmers around the world. So the next time you take a sip of that delicious cup of coffee, make sure to remember the faces of the people who made it possible, because they're thinking of you every step of the way. Right. The idea of opening a visitor center at the farm was developed in 2017. For the cost of $25, you can go on a 90-minute tour. And on this tour, you'll see how Starbucks sources this coffee from seed to cup. The daily hours of the visitor center are from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the cafe and gift shop are open from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Right. On this tour, you're going to see the greenhouse as well as the coffee fields, the wet mill, the drying patio, the coffee roaster, and the Starbucks cafe and shop. So we're going to visit each of these areas of the coffee farm, and I wanted to show you the perspective of visitors who have been to the coffee farm and what they see. And so I've pulled photos for this next part from Instagram to show you the coffee farm. All right, let's get started. So in our first stop at the nursery, we're going to see plants in each growing stage and learn more about the coffee plant itself. Um, from there, we're going to visit the coffee fields and see the varieties of coffee. There's going to be many subspecies of coffee, just like there's different types of apples. You know, you have a green apple, a red apple, a pink apple. There's different kinds of coffee beans and coffee cherries. Um, these beans are going to be, well, these coffee cherries are going to be harvested and picked by hand by workers on the farm. And on the tour, you get a chance to pick a few beans yourself when they are. All right, so next we're gonna go to the wet mill. And at the wet mill is where we go through the process of removing the seed um, or the coffee bean from the cherry, the coffee fruit itself. At the wet mill, we're also going to talk about Starbucks commitment to sustainability. The farm is gonna use the organic materials like leaves and branches of the coffee trees and the processing byproducts like skin and pulp to make fertilizer for the farm. All right, so next we're gonna check out the drying patio. Now at the drying patio, the beans are gonna be raked out where they spend five to seven days in the sun, being raked every 30 to 45 minutes throughout the day. The parchment around the bean is gonna protect it while it's being walked on. At night, the beans are going to be raked into piles and covered up. Once the coffee beans are dried, they're going to go into storage for up to two months, and then the parchment, 
and then the parchment will be removed in a um, machine that uses friction to remove it. At the greenhouse, we're going to talk about Starbucks and their research and development that they're doing at the farm. So Starbucks is um, working to identify and create new varieties of coffee trees. And the way that they do this is pollen from one tree is painted inside the flower of another tree. Then the researchers have to wait for those cherries to ripen, and then eventually they'll take the beans from those cherries and plant them as seeds. And then they have to wait for those trees to grow and produce fruit. And they'll see if the um, fruit has the desired characteristics that they're looking for. Um, they're looking for characteristics like being disease resilient and producing more cherries overall. Successful varieties of coffee trees created through research and development are gonna be freely shared with farmers around the world. A tour at Hacienda Alsacia is going to wrap up in the cafe. This is actually where their roastery is located, and beans right from the farm are handled with care by master roasters. You can enjoy a coffee tasting experience with locally inspired foods. And the Starbucks Cafe and Shop here at Hacienda Alsacia is an extension of premium retail experiences like roasteries and reserve bars that Starbucks has in other parts of the world. Single origin coffee beans are available for purchase. The first batch of the coffee beans that were grown and harvested from the farm in 2014 were exclusively shared with partners, and so they weren't available for the public to purchase. Outside of the use on the farm, the beans have been served exclusively at the Starbucks Reserve Roastery and Tasting Room in Seattle. I did see that the Hacienda Alsacia blend has more recently been shared with reserve bars in other parts of the world, like in Asia. I do think that they are expanding its offering um, in those kinds of special locations. So next we're going to talk about Starbucks commitment to the future of coffee. Starbucks helps farmers and communities in coffee-growing regions around the world to produce coffee in a sustainable way to ensure the future of coffee for all. Starbucks works to reduce coffee's impact on the environment. Since we implemented our cafe practices in 2004, we've seen a 50% reduction in our carbon footprint. Since 2013 at Hacienda Alsacia, we've been using innovative equipment and solar energy. Starbucks works to support coffee communities all around the world. For the temporary workers working at Hacienda Alsacia, housing is provided as well as medical and dental care and also childcare. Another example of Starbucks support for coffee communities came in 2018 when Starbucks committed $20 million for, emergent re for emergency relief to smallholder farms impacted by a drop in coffee price in Central America. This money subsidized farmer income in countries including Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Mexico. Starbucks is working to help farmers be more profitable. We're developing new varieties of Arabica coffee beans that are resilient to diseases like coffee rust, and this will give farmers better yields in their crops. At the farm, 14 hectares of land are dedicated exclusively to research and development. To hear a little more about the research and development at Hacienda Alsacio, let's hear from Carlos Mari. This year at this nursery at the Alsacia farm, we have about 50,000 seedlings. And that means that we have about 60 different coffee varieties that we are just ready to plant next year at the farm. 
So the idea is to set up plots with about 200 plants each plot in order to gather information on the resistance to coffee rust, productivity and cup profile. Carlos Mario became Starbucks Director of Global Agronomy in 2004. An agronomist is a scientist or expert in soil management and crop production. He teaches farmers things like how to improve their production based on each farm's unique attributes and how to avoid the use of pesticides. Carlos has said, to me, as a professional, as a partner, it's the best part really when you start working with a particular farmer and you can see that they're improving their living conditions and being able to keep producing coffee as a good business. That's the best. It's really something that motivates us. I've only shared a few examples here of Starbucks commitment to creating a sustainable future for coffee. As we celebrate the 50th year of Starbucks, there are all kinds of new goals that are being put in place and developed to continue this. When I chose to create a coffee leadership project around Hacienda Alsacia, I wanted to include a virtual visit to the farm in Costa Rica as 2020 and 2021 have not been the best years for traveling. While working on my project, Starbucks shared an all new virtual origin experience centered around the farm and it's available to everyone, not only Starbucks partners. Now a visit is accessible to all and is available in eight different languages. This experience guides you through a visit with a field journal full of information. At the end of the journey, you get access to a downloadable PDF of all the information. It also has extra content, including recipes with espresso in them. Here's a few of them. And I really want to try this one with a sparkling espresso in it. it. Sounds delicious. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Starbucks coffee farm and the efforts Starbucks makes in sustainability. Remember, our mission isn't just to supply Starbucks with coffee, but to safeguard the future of coffee for everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this part of my coffee leadership journey. I'll share the links for Starbucks Coffee Academy and the virtual origin experience down below. My other resources can be found at the very end of this presentation. Thanks again.